What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another live stream. I'm just setting up uh, Instagram at the moment. So we go live on Insta. Um, what's up, everyone? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. I'm excited for today's live stream, as always. Um, today, I'm thinking about doing something a little bit different, maybe flipping some stuff live. Um, I've got a ton of people reach out. They're like, hey, when you flip some stuff, I want to, how are you flipping all this stuff? Um, actually our best performing YouTube video, I believe is our video on like flipping stuff on Craigslist, the free section. And since doing that, we've had so many people reach out and ask questions about how that all works. So, um, I'm curious if you guys would want to see that. Do you guys want to see what's up people of Insta? Do you guys want to see me flip some stuff live? Um, and if so, would you guys be interested in seeing me do that in like the free section? So I can show you how to do it with like out ever picking up the item, or would you be more interested in seeing how it's done? You know, finding a hundred dollar couch, buying it for 50, selling it for 200. Um, curious now, if you guys have questions, put them in the comments. Um, cause we're answering questions as well. If not enough people want to see that, then we're not going to do it today. Um, Let's see. We got a couple questions on Instagram that I'll get to before we get into it. Um, so the first is, have you been playing stock slash crypto? I have not. Um, I have. I have a uh, invested. Whoop, I must stop the Instagram feed. I've been investing or I invested in a really poor performing stock last year. Um, did not play out well. But if you've been in the crypto game or the stock game, um, Everything's gone up, so you've been crushing it. So uh, what I'll say is times are good. People get to see what things are like when times are good. When times aren't good, then the game changes. Then you really figure out who's good and who's not. Um, someone asked, Ty asked, what's up, Ty? Um, <laughs> Ty asked, what do you know about getting pretty much like flipping Pokemon cards? I'm not into flipping cards. I'm not a fan of it personally. I know nothing about it. Therefore, uh, not going to touch it. Zero interest personally. Uh, I know it's getting hot right now because of Gary V. Everyone's getting into this because Gary V made it kind of big. Uh, before that, no one was talking about fucking flipping cards. Um, again, I think it's weird. I think cards, I think sports cards are weird. I think Pokemon cards are fucking weird. I think all of it's weird. That's how I feel about it. Never been into it. We'll never touch it. So <laughs> a lot of people are making a lot of money though in it. So that's a great uh, hustle, I guess. But my point by saying that it's fucking weird is don't get into it because other people are getting into it. Like if you're not passionate about that stuff, I wouldn't touch it because someone else that is really passionate about it and really understands it's going to beat you out in terms of like long run because they understand it really well. Maybe they're really, really passionate about fucking baseball cards. But again, not passionate, not touching. It's fucking weird in my opinion. <laughs> Someone asks, what's your max bench? <laughs> Elliot. Um, Deirdre says not a lot. So before the project, um, Deirdre says still not a lot. I think I was, I was pretty, I think I got to like 270. Um, that was my max bench. I was getting there. I used to be fit. Now I'm not in good shape whatsoever. Looking like a fucking slob. Lost a lot of muscle during this project. But uh, but yeah, so now it's probably... I don't even know if I could press 200 at this point. Um, let's see. Okay, Ty says he's keeping them for myself. Got in three years ago prior to GV. So if you got prior to... All right, so Ty, you're a fucking weirdo, man. You're fucking around with cards, weirdo. <laughs> but you are probably ca able to capitalize on that now because of Gary V. So I'm assuming if you got three years ago, Ty, then what's great about that is like, I, I can bet, you can attest to this, has the price gone up significantly? So... If you got in it before all this, you got in at the bottom and now it's probably significantly more expensive. So you have to make a decision is, is that going to continue? Or if a recession comes, everyone will be like, why the hell was I investing in sports cards or, or Pokemon cards, whatever. Um, 
He said, my collection I paid $1,500 is now worth $8,500. So that's awesome. That's really awesome. So for anyone that's listening, just understand where the market's at because specifically because of Gary V. Understand that if we do the math on that, what is that? Like a six, about a five to six X. We'll call it 5.5 X increase in price. So if you are wanting to trade cards, they are now five and a half times more expensive than they were three years ago. Just understand that you are paying a premium. This could potentially be a sports card slash card bubble. If we go into a recession, people are going to have cards and be like, why the fuck do I have cards? That's what's going to happen. Um, and Ty says, very bad time to be a buyer. Super inflated. So think about that when you're thinking about doing that type of stuff. Um, I think it's irresponsible if people start talking all about like, oh, you should be investing in cards and whatnot. I think... My assumption, bad market because of the inflation. Again, five, this is, I'm glad you said it, 5.5 times. So if you're going to buy low, sell high, sports cards is not the thing to do it in. That's all I'll say. Um, so let's see if we have any more. Cool. I got all that. Okay. Connor asked, how much money have you made this week? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it's been a decent week. Um Deirdre says we've made nothing. What's today? The 15th. Um, so I get $2,000 a month from the lawyer client and then $3,600 a month from the e-com house. So that's $5,600 every month. And then in terms of the, the, the e-com business, we've made sales. We got a big influx of sales for um, Valentine's Day. Um, so this is something that I learned. Uh, this being my first e-com business is that it's a good thing to um, invest into like ahead of time into like um, holidays. So any holidays that are coming up, just leverage it to give a reason to give a discount. If we had gone on Etsy and like um, uh, changed our listing to set to like use Valentine's day tags, I think we would have got even more sales. Um, so be cognizant of that if you're an econ business. I think most probably are, but like I'd list out all the holidays so it's on a calendar so you can prepare for your marketing efforts around that holiday. I mean, you guys know it. You've seen it by all the ads you get hit with, right? Like they're like the Valentine's Day special, 20% off. Um, it's probably a pretty common thing, but you got to like get your design on point. You got to get your copy on point. You got to prepare. And we just didn't even think about that. So um things to talk about. Okay. You guys have any other questions, pop them in the comments. I want to talk about flipping. I want to talk about flipping. Um, again, got a lot of outreach, asked about flipping. Actually, I saw some losers on the video thinking that like it was fake. Um, that like doing this strategy that I had talked about isn't real. Um, and I guess rightfully so, because there's no actual videos of me physically talking to someone and setting all this up, even though we actually have the footage of it at the time we were like, really, we didn't understand the laws to be able to record conversations. And we didn't want to do that for obvious reasons. Um, so what we decided to do with, with the vlogs moving forward is like, if we do record a conversation, we had looked up the laws and also deepen the voice. So you can't like actually hear, um, like who it is for privacy reasons, but still it's like a really sh gray area that I don't love doing. The only reason I like doing it is for the purpose of teaching. Um, so I was, I was like, you know, it'd be cool to do this live. Also, I don't know if I can make calls live. Um, but let's, let's flip some stuff live. It'd be pretty fun. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and we're gonna flip some stuff. So if you're on Instagram, get on YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn. We're going to flip some stuff live. Um, if you guys have any questions about the project or flipping, pop in the comments. We're going to do this right now. So I'm going to share my screen. <sighs> Is it going to like mess lighting up if I turn this screen on next to me? I mean, it's whatever. Turn it on. Do I just click the button or is it like uh, unplugged? If I turn this monitor on. I don't. Oh, 
Okay, hold on, guys. We gotta get this monitor on real quick, um, and then we're gonna start flipping stuff because I want to still be able to see the comments while we're flipping stuff on the other screen. Uh, so Deirdre's gonna set that up. In the meantime, someone asked, "How's my day going?" It's going awesome, man. How's your just going? Oh, you're good. Just go around. <laughs> They're just trying to hide. <laughs> <laughs> you did like a little duck there. <laughs> it's going good. Um, we just gotta get this monitor set up here, and then we're gonna um, we're gonna f we're gonna flip some stuff live. Now, guys, flipping stuff is a great way to make some capital. Um, it's a great thing to do, like on the weekends. Like if you're fucking sitting around watching Netflix, playing video games, doing all that shit, why don't, why don't you flip some stuff, make a couple hundred bucks over the weekend? Stop complaining about not having enough money for your business. Go flip some stuff. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how I do it. And we're going to walk through it right now. We have 50 minutes here. More than enough time. Um, people are saying put Deirdre on the live stream. People are not saying that. Yeah, they are. I'm not making that up. Um, okay. Is that connecting? Okay, looks like we're connected, potentially. Yes, we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over here. Okay, guys, we're doing this. <laughs> we're doing this. Maybe I'll. You know what I'll do? I'll move the. I'll put this on here and the live stream on this big monitor. Okay, so let me share my screen with you guys. Uh. Screen sharing is easiest with two monitors. Uh, they, they even tell you, they're like, screen sharing is e easiest if you have two monitors. Here we go. Okay, you guys can see my monitor now. We are on Craigslist. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Let me actually like pull up Facebook on my other computer. So I just don't want to like put stuff that I shouldn't about the project on here. Um, so I want to be careful when I pull up the Facebook marketplace. Let's do that. Cause I have the business page. I don't want that to be shown. Okay, cool. So I think we're good now. We're in the marketplace. Um, if, as you guys can see, like Facebook knows what you've been looking for. You can see monitors. So I need to get cheap monitors, so I was using Facebook Marketplace for that. Um, so we're gonna flip some stuff. So the first thing I'll do, there's there's multiple approaches here. The first approach is, do you wanna get stuff for, from the free section, or do you wanna find good deals and flip them? I personally like finding good deals and flipping them. Now, if you don't have a car or transportation to do this, there's ways around that. That was a big problem I had when I started the project, right? I didn't have transportation. You can either A, find someone to be the transportation and pay them to transport the item, or B, you can be a middleman and never touch the item, ever. So let's do this. Let's just use Philly, for example. I'm going to go the, for the free section just to start. So what I'll do, and by the way, this is significantly better on the phone. It's so much better on your phone to do it, um, but just so I can uh, screen share, I'm not going to do the phone. Um so I like couches and this is all a speed game. So you want to be really fast. Now, when you're flipping stuff in the free section, the goal is to find a couch that is in very good condition that can sell. You don't want crap items. Those aren't going to sell. Like looking at this, this doesn't look like a great item. Yeah, this is awful. Like th this is all like messed up. Avoid those items. Okay. Now, when you're flipping free stuff specifically, they care the most about speed. Speed is the most important thing. They want the item out. That's why they're giving it away for free. So when you're trying to sell an item for someone and be the middleman, you don't talk about money. You talk about speed first. So let's just use this. This actually looks kind of cool. This elderly workhorse still somewhat works. Eh, somewhat works. Probably not a good thing. What I would do, though, is I'd look up this exact item. I don't like that it kind of works. If it fully works and they just wanted it out, um, also Kensington's a pretty bad area. Um, if they just wanted this thing out, I would look this up. So HP design jet 500, I go to eBay and I'd type that in. So 
This is how you look up any item, by the way. Now, it's harder with big items. Be cognizant of that. But eBay is a great place to figure out the worth of something. So I just typed it in. So you do that, and then you want to go to completed listings. So this is how you see what items are worth. What have these things sold for? Now, again, this is a huge item, so it's probably not selling on eBay. But let's let's do something else. Let's do like a, something that's not so freaking big. Um, well, let's just go on the... Let's see. Uh, furniture is too tough. Um, that's also big, right? Let's see. This is what I do though. It works really well. This, I don't know, this Osmo educational game. Um, let's try that. Now I, w I would want the exact item name to be able to look this up, but I'll just type it in and we can see, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different Osmo stuff. Okay. This is, this looks like it Osmo genius kit for iPad. So it's 40, someone paid 40 bucks for it. There's a lot of stuff that isn't the same. 40 bucks. Someone sold it for 20, it looks like. Um, I don't know if there's something missing though. Now, the other thing is like, is this new or is this used? This says pre-owned, so it was used. 40 bucks looks like it's what people are selling for. This person's selling for 25. Now, is it worth buying some for 25, selling it for 40 on eBay? In my opinion, fuck no. Um, because you have to go drive, pick this thing up, listen on eBay, there's eBay fees. And at the end of the day, are you making more than like 20 an hour? If the answer is no, then like get a fucking job. Don't flip stuff, like do stuff on Upwork. Um, anyone that tells you differently is an idiot. Like don't, don't flip this. Now what you could do is now, and this is important guys. I could reach out to this person. I'll do it right now. Um, and just say, Hey, is this still available? Would you do and for it and then speed's important so i could say could come today and send message boom okay so if this person says yes then i get ten dollars right and that's great um then maybe it's worth it and i don't even think i would do this honestly it's just 30 bucks and i have to go fucking travel get it it's in new hope which is like a 25 minute drive so you gotta take that into account guys and I personally like to do things where I can make $100 or more because there's so many things that you can make $100 or more. So why spend time on like flipping some stupid Osmo thing, um, in my opinion? So, But I'm just showing you guys how I do the research and how I make these decisions uh, right now. So again, if you guys have questions, drop them in the comments. Um, okay, so did this person get back to me already? Oh, uh, no, it's just like some stupid shit, uh, COVID stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> back to the free section. What I'm just going to do, I actually don't typically do this because I like speed, but I'm just going to type in couch. I want to see if there's any nice couches. Um, shit, shit. Like, this is not a good couch, guys. I, that That's the biggest problem I see that people um, have is they, like, will end up getting some shitty couch. And like you don't, you're not gonna be able to sell this. No one's gonna buy that for money. Um, this couch actually doesn't look too bad. This one right here. Um, I have to like actually see a little bit more. Is there any rips with couches? Is rips, tears, stains, smells? Um, about two years old. Not the greatest couch, um, but it gets the job done. Eh, you did like bring it down a set of stairs. They have a new couch. Again, this doesn't look horrible. Honestly, two years old, as long as it doesn't smell, um, maybe they just don't like it. I could probably sell this couch for like 50 to 100 potentially. So then I'm not, I wouldn't actually list this couch. But if I were to do it, very simple, save image, go to the next image, save image. And then I'd reach out to this person and reply. This is listed 13 days ago, so it might be gone. But I would hit reply. And then the most important thing I'd email them is like, hey, super interested in the couch could come pick it up today. Remember speed. Um, uh, here's my number. Just give me a quick call. If, if like it's still available, you want to get them on the phone. Then when I get them on the phone, uh, this is what I say. I'd go, Hey Tom, um, thanks so much. I'm, I'm super interested in the couch. I can get rid of it today. I actually don't personally want it, but I run a business where I sell people stuff for free and I give them a, a half of everything I sell. 
and I scale it with ads. Like that's what I do. And I tell them I run ads, which I do. I run, I put on Facebook marketplace and I just put like $5 an ad budget and it'll sell much faster. Like I would prefer to do that because it will sell significantly faster. But I tell them I run ads, I market everything. I could get you probably 50 bucks for this. And this is the most important part. And I could get rid of it probably within the next couple hours. Again, they care about speed. I have someone come pick it up today. Now, hopefully you can do that. If not, then you also want to be, don't lie. But like what happens is you start getting good at knowing how quickly you can get rid of stuff. And if you just spend time on Craigslist and just refresh a bit, then eventually you'll find something. Now, let's just say that I find um, something really good. Um, I talk to the person, I convince them, and then I go list it on Facebook. It's super easy to run ads, by the way, on Facebook. It's not like the ads manager. You literally just click a button and it boosts the post in Marketplace, which by the way, you never want to do for any ads you ever run on Facebook. You do want to do it for Marketplace. It's okay to do it for Marketplace. So then what you do, you'll get inquiries, et cetera, and you let the person know that is inquiring. You just say, hey, like the, you'll negotiate and then they'll either pay you with Venmo or they'll pay the person with Venmo or cash um, when they get there. Now, I did this like, over 20 times and not one person screwed me over. Not one single person screwed me over. So do not be scared of people like screwing you over, not paying you when you sell the item for them. Maybe it'll happen. And if I did a hundred times, maybe one person would have screwed me over. I went zero for 20 people screwing me over 0%. But of course you might have a different scenario where someone does screw you over. But my assumption is it'll happen like 1% of, of the time. Maybe if I did a hundred, one or two people could have potentially screwed me over. It this works so well that it's whatever. One or two percent, I'll eat that cost all day. Um uh, let's see. Ooh. Okay, so someone asks, let me pull this up. Someone asks, how would you do that without a car? I don't want to hire anyone either. Well, then you're screwed, Connor. You gotta hire, you gotta you if you don't have a car. There's two things you can do. Number one, Connor, is you can rent a um, U-Haul if you're of age. How old is it to be to rent a U-Haul? Like 25? You don't know. Who knows? I, I think it's like 25. Let's look look that up. Um, how old to rent U-Haul? Oh, 18 years old. And then you just like pay an extra fee. If you're you just pay like an extra fee. That's right. So, okay. So, the answer, Connor, is you pay an extra fee um, if you're under 25, which I think you are because you've been on the live stream a lot. So, um, so U-Haul, rent a U-Haul. It's 20 bucks typically, and then you pay for mileage. Rent a U-Haul. If you need to hire someone to help you move stuff, task grab it. If you don't want to... Um, don't want to use if your local area has it, I would recommend not using TaskRabbit if you can, because it'll be cheaper if you go into a Facebook group and find someone. So in Austin, Texas, we have uh Austin Runner City. And uh that's what I use to hire people to do this type of stuff. Um, but if not, TaskRabbit. Uh if TaskRabbit doesn't work, every local area, by the way, has Facebook groups. Like my local area right now, I'm in a suburb, 45 minutes outside of Philly. We have a big Facebook group for the local area. I could post in there and be like, hey, I need someone to help me move. Does anyone know anyone? You'll get someone. Um, so the options are U-Haul, hire someone to help you move stuff and you get the U-Haul. Or you could post in the local Facebook group, hey, I'm looking for someone that can move shit for me. This is how much I'm, I'd pay for it. Or you can even split the cost with that person. Now, Connor, also, if you're listening... How would you do it without a car? You can do the method that I was just talking about. Go find something, hit them up and say, hey, I can get you more money for this. Or, or sorry, uh, a free item. I can get you money for this and be the middleman. So let's just look at this couch right here, guys. See this ugly ass couch? You can't sell this couch. This couch is total trash, right? Um, but, 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 let's just pretend this was a really nice couch. By the way, guys, by the way, watch the vlog. The couch that Deirdre and I have in our living room right now was from the free section of Marketplace, I think, right? Yeah, Facebook. Facebook Marketplace free section. You have to be quick, though, for the free section of Facebook Marketplace. It goes like that. You have to be quick for Craigslist, too, if it's really good. Facebook, obviously, you have to be faster. That's a four. We could sell that for four or $500. That set we got for free, for free. Now, if we really wanted to, 
we could have hit them up and be like, hey, we can get you $200 for this couch. Um, let us list it for you. We'll run ads to it, et cetera. Or sorry, $400. We'll give you half of what it sells for. And then we would just list it. We would run ads to it. And now, by the way, this doesn't work nearly as well if you're taking it off Facebook. You have to do this. You have to take it off Craigslist and list it on Facebook. That's the arbitrage opportunity or let go slash offer up, offer up, bought, let go. You can take it off those platforms, put it on Facebook. Facebook's so much better. You get so much more viewership. You can't take someone on the free section of Facebook and like sell it. It's just not, it's going to be too hard Um, because they can just list it on Facebook. They just won't run ads. So what you can do though, anywhere else, get someone for free section, put it on Facebook marketplace, run ads to it. And you can call them and say, I will sell this instead of you getting it for free and I'll get it. I'll get rid of it just as quickly, if not quicker than you. Um, so, um, that's, what's up there. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Bor says, love your content. Someone else agrees. You guys are awesome. Love you guys. What up chase? How's it going, man? Okay, cool. Guys, if you have questions about flipping, drop them. Um, so let's see if we can actually flip something. Let's take a look now. Hold on guys. Let's take a step back here. Really important. If you can find something on Facebook Marketplace in the free section, the most ideal thing you can do is pick it up and then sell it. You'll make a, a lot of money because look at, again, the couch Deirdre and I got, the couch set is worth four to $500. In total cost, we had to go pick it up, get a U-Haul, do all that stuff. Let's just call it a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, whatever. Then you sell it for 400, 500, you make two, $300, one flip. So what you can do is make one flip, two flips every weekend. You'd be making a couple thousand dollars a month doing this. Couple, if you make two thousand, if you make two thousand dollars in profit every single month just from flipping stuff is like a fun thing to do. That's twenty four thousand dollars more per year in the bank. It's a lot of money. Um. So consider that. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, let's go to the free section. Okay. So let's see. We got some items that just came through 28 bread trays. Uh, so like, this is interesting. I don't, I don't know what bread trays go for, but like, maybe you could get these bread trays and then sell them to a restaurant. Uh, let's see. I wouldn't want to do that though. There's, there's like a limit here, guys. Like Right now, restaurants are getting crushed. I wouldn't want to take these free bread trays and then flip them. Like that just makes you a dick. Um, let some restaurant that's trying to get through all this like take advantage of that. But if I was a dick, then let's see, twenty eight bread trays. Um, I don't know bread trays for sale. Uh, industrial bread trays. Just curious. Again, I would not touch this. Okay, they're not that much. I mean, they're like ten dollars a piece. It looks like. Um, so if they're ten bucks a piece and there's twenty four, that's two hundred forty dollars. So if you could get these bread trays and flip them for half, um, then you could probably make like a hundred bucks here. So then what I would do is list this on marketplace. So I'd copy it, put it on market. I, well, first I'd get the bread trays, list it on marketplace, run like $5 in ads to it. And I list it for like a hundred bucks. So, well, I guess $280. So you could make like a hundred, I think you can make like a hundred to $140 on these bread trays. Again, restaurants are getting crushed. So that'd be a slimy ass thing to do. But um, if it was something else, I would probably, Cons I'd probably consider that one right there. Depends on the condition of the trays. Um, all right, so let's look at marketplace here. Marketplace. I'm big on MacBooks. Let's look at MacBooks. By the way, MacBook Pros. You can make really good money. Um, oh, that's great. You make really good money with those. Uh, I like like twenty. 15 or sorry 2015 and up and I like 15 inch so let's do I'll just start looking through uh 
MacBook Pro 20. So I don't like when it's shipped to me. I'm not going to do that. Uh, that's too much opportunity for scams. Mac, if you're going to flip MacBooks, by the way, you got to really pay attention to like not getting scammed. You have to be really careful with that stuff. You don't want to get scammed. Um, so like, I like to see like kids that are selling stuff or like people in tech, things like that. Um, I've been scammed before and I was lucky enough to recoup my money from it. Um, but MacBooks are expensive. So when you're like buying and selling expensive stuff, it gives you a lot of room to make margin. Uh, let's see. Mm, let's you know what this is missing 15 inch and oh sorry for the filters you want to have you want this to be local uh delivery method and you want always want to be local pickup so it's missing that i might make this a little bit larger let's do like eh, 40 miles is a lot uh Okay, so 2018, 15 inch. So here's what I'll do, guys. And this is really important. You need to reach out to these people. And first off, you need to know what these are priced at, which I'll show you how to do. We'll just use the same method. But you need to reach out to these people and negotiate. Like if someone wants 1500, I'm not offering 1500. Um, so let's just take a look, we'll figure out what this is worth. Now this person made it really hard. I said to like turn my head here to read this shit. Um, what is this? 2018, 15 inch, 16 gig. Okay. So then let's do 2018. So then we just go here, right? MacBook pro 2018, 15 inch. Well, I'll just do that. MacBook pro 2018. And then what I'll do is here. I'll do, I'll click 15 inch and then they're, RAM is 16, which by the way, RAM is expensive, so that's good. And then what's their hard drive? Hard drive also plays a factor. I can't see it. They made this tough. They're, the graphics card's on there. Maybe the hard drive isn't. Um, let's take a look. Also, is there issues? Oh, he puts it here, 512 SSD. So laptop comes with Apple Care. That's great. They got a 2020. That's great. This story sounds good. They joined Facebook in 2012. That means that the likelihood of them scamming goes down. It's not like a new account. Never buy anything from a new account. Um, he also said, let me know your price. That's great. That means um, that he like is open to negotiation. So let's do 512. I also check off 500 just in case like people list stuff for 500. Okay, so we do that, right? And now we need to go to completed listings, which were incomplete listings. So right now we have one that sold for 1300. Now remember there's 10%, I think eBay fee, 1000, 550. This one's probably fucked up though. Um, this 1400 one didn't sell. 1400, 1500, 1300. So I can, so just looking at these, I get an idea of like what I could sell it for, probably like, I'm just going to make up and say like, okay, I probably sell this for like 1300. Then the 10% fee, it's $130. Then I also to go acquire this thing. That's not 1500, not a good deal, not a good deal. So what I want to do, and then we have to like inspect it and make sure it's good. Right? So ideally if I, if I'm going to sell this thing for, let's just say 1300 bucks and I'm going to make like 12 around 1200, let's just say we make around 1200. I want to buy this thing for like, 900 so literally i'll hit him up and be like hey mikhail how's it going um interested in this would love to learn more I'm going down real low. I'm saying 800. Now this guy has already like way overpriced this thing. Um, obviously compared to eBay. So I'm just going to say 800. Now don't be scared to do that. Don't be scared to give a really low offer. Um, I'm a, a low baller. That's my strategy. I low ball people. 800 is not low balling that much, honestly. Um, but you got to low ball because 
like if I'm willing to do 900 tops, don't fucking start at 900. Like you have no negotiation room. So again, this guy like really overpriced this. So a lot of times don't even pay attention to what they're looking for. Um, and then here's the thing. <clears throat> here's the thing I love about Facebook. What Facebook's going to do, this guy might say no. Really good chance he says no, right? Um, if he says no, which he probably will. Oh, come on, these stupid like notifications. Um, it's not even marking as red. Facebook, you're awesome. Um, wh when, he, when this guy says no, he's not going to sell this. He listed it way too high. So what Facebook's going to do is when he reduces the price, every time he reduces the price, Facebook's going to message me and tell me that he reduced the price. So th what that does is great because I'm the first person to know that it got reduced. And then it's also awesome because I will follow up. You guys want to know the secret of business and sales? Follow up, follow up. I cannot tell you how important it is and how all the MacBook Pro deals I did except for one was because of follow up. So just because someone says no does not mean they're, he might list it in a month later be like, okay, fine, I'll take 800. Um, very high probability that could happen. <clears throat> um, let's see. So let's move on. Let's make another offer. Uh, this is a 13 inch. If you guys are flipping computers, by the way, like there's a big difference between 13 inches and 15 inches slash 16 inches because the 15 and 16 inches can upgrade a lot more. Like you can do, do stuff with the graphics card. The Ram goes a lot higher. So like the 15 inches are worth a lot more than the 13 inches. So be cognizant of that if you're trying to flip them. Okay, this person has this MacBook Pro listed at, at 1300 Again, this is super, I just know just by like what I just saw that this is overpriced, but I'm still gonna lowball this person. I hope this person's ready to get lowballed. Let's lowball this fucker. All right, so look, they listed it 10 weeks ago. That's a sign of like, you overpriced it, Nicole. Okay, so let's give Nicole, I, by the way, I like this. She's 2012, I, this looks like a sorority picture. Um, probably a college student or had graduated, which is great. Uh, the person who tried to scam me, by the way, looked like a scammer. Like I, I met up with him. The dude looked like stone. Literally, I told the guy this. I was like, dude, you look like Stone Cold Steve Austin. The guy looked like Stone Cold Steve Austin. He like was missing teeth. Didn't seem like a friendly guy at all. Didn't seem like a guy that ever used a MacBook in his life. Didn't know how to use a MacBook when I asked him certain questions. Just be like cognizant if something's shady. Ask the right questions to make sure that it's not stolen. And this was stolen. Um, you'll know. Okay. Fuck. I just lost that. I was I was writing it lowball Nicole. Okay. So I'll just say. Oh, she said price negotiable. She'll, she's willing to ship it. I'm not a fan of that. There's too many issues that can happen. Okay, so hey, Nicole. Hope you're having a great week. I'm always friendly. I'm friendly and then I lowball. <laughs> always be friendly. Um, is this still available? If so, would you be willing? I'm going to say like seven. Uh, I, I don't know. What is this? What year is this? I don't feel like looking it up because we already looked it up. It's a 2016. Uh, honestly, like I'm going to say 600. Now, does that feel uncomfortable, guys? I just literally offered a chick 600 bucks when she wants 1300. 600 bucks. That's literally less than half of what she wanted. Don't worry about that feeling uncomfortable. Like a lot of people are going to say no to that. But then one person says yes, and now you have a MacBook 2016 for 600 that you can sell for 1100, and you get that 500 dollars margin um, after like fees and shit, and like picking it up. So enough lowballs will get you a, a yes, but it's about but you got to follow up. You got to find the right deals. You got to find the right situations. Again, 10 weeks ago, it's been sitting there now. By the way, guys, I usually won't come out and offer on the first message. The reason I'm doing that is because we're live right now and I'm just showing you kind of what I say, but you can just say hi and just ask if this is available. And then the second message, then do your offer. 
because I like to get them to respond because if they respond, if the likelihood of them responding to this offer on the first message is much lower that they're going to respond at all. than then if I like ask them how it's going, is it still available? They'd say yes. And then I say, Hey, would you do this? They'll at least have responded. And then like, we'll have some form of communication in some form of relationship starting. Um, so I usually do two messages, but again, in the case of being on the live stream, we're doing this. Um, so that's what I'll do. I'll just keep going through shit and it takes time. It takes a lot of messages, but eventually you might get a yes. Let's see this. This is old. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the older computers. Um, what is this? 2014. I personally will only flip things probably like 2016 and up. Um, I don't like doing the older stuff, but like, I'm sure there's a lot of market for the older stuff. Um, so we do have some, we have one question on Insta that asks, can you post this live after you're done so I can watch it later at the gym right now? Yeah. So, uh, Jacob, we post all of these, they're all on YouTube. Um, so the live stream will be on YouTube. Um, okay. So just at, like first glance, there's not some like great deals out there. Um, now if I was going to go buy one of these, I would like, here's what's important. I'll say this about like MacBook specifically, and I'm sure any other electronics test the thing when you go out there, like become an expert at like MacBooks. Don't just start doing this and like not know how MacBooks work. And then like, because like you want to reduce your margin of like potentially getting scammed or getting a bad deal. Um, so like you got to turn the thing on, you got to use it. You got to check certain things with MacBooks. You want to check things like battery cycle. You want to make sure everything works. Um, you want to make sure the person's not a scammer. Um, again, like don't, this is, I'll just say this because I don't want people to watch this and then be like, I'm going to go flip MacBooks. Like MacBook Airs are trash computers compared to MacBook Pros. Like that's why when you're looking like a MacBook Air, don't look at that and be like, wow, that's a great deal. Like, like you need to look it up on eBay. So like this MacBook Air 2020 256 gig, let's just look this up and see what the market will pay for this. Um, and by the way, guys, I'm not selling these on eBay. Let me make that very clear. I'm not selling these on eBay almost ever, unless it makes sense to sell an item on eBay. I always want to sell these locally and bump it with marketplace ads, like two to five bucks, maybe 10. Um, I'm just using eBay to see what the price is. So MacBook 20, uh, MacBook Air 2020, like, look at this shit. These are like 700, 500. No, I have to look at 256. Okay. So either way, this person's way high, way high. Um, I'm not willing to ship. I only accept cash, whatever. Willing to answer. Give me at least one business day. Um, I don't like this person's 2016, but that's not like that crazy. It's like five years ago. Um, but I'll always check the person out. I'll take a look at his profile. Make sure he's seems like a real human. Um, let's see. I also uh, uh, have been prepared for about, he had it for two weeks and decided to upgrade um, to a pro because MacBook Air suck. <laughs> that's why. Um, he can't return it, whatever, because um, he bought it at a small discount. That's weird. So they don't accept return. That's kind of weird. I don't love that story. Um, either like he didn't, he started using it and realized the performance wasn't what he needed, which again, MacBook Airs, like I said, are not as good. Um, or there's something shady. So that opens up potential shade. Um, I don't love, and I'll just say this, I don't love buying the newest MacBooks if I'm doing this strategy because it's too much room for error. Like, why are you actually getting rid of this? Did you do something to it? Um, did something happen to the MacBook? Like, why would you buy this and then immediately sell it? Now, a lot of people probably, that's a very reasonable thing. If like you bought it and you're like, fuck, this thing is not the performance I wanted. Then that's a good story that makes sense. If that's actually true, you just, again, it's kind of interesting. Um, <clears throat> someone says if you guys are gonna um do these is sean he says apple has a diagnosis tool you can run also can check out the serial number on apple's website to make sure there's a legit purchase date that's a very good point um also check the battery i did mention the battery cycles actually but um 
what Sean's saying here is very true. You do want to check all these things. So just take his advice. I'm not going to repeat it. When I f- like bought and sold MacBooks, I did the same exact thing. I don't remember it off the top of my head. I just Google it. And there's a way you can check, I think, the serial number, all that stuff. If you can even get a receipt, that is the best thing you can do is get a physical receipt. Where's your receipt, my man? The only way they wouldn't have the receipt is if it was a gift. So that kind of reduces the chances if someone had stolen it. Um, so you don't want to buy something stolen. And MacBooks are a very hot market for theft. Um, okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Now, guys, what I also want to mention that I forgot to mention is like this lowballing thing I'm doing here. I love how Facebook is just not taking these notifications away. Um, what's really important is you guys can see here that this listing by Nicole is so overpriced. It's very overpriced. Like we looked at it, it's clearly overpriced. People are not going to reach out to her. She's not getting inquiries. I can promise you guys, she's getting very little inquiries. You, that's an opportunity because now you can create an inquiry that she probably hasn't gotten any because it's so overpriced. And you can say, hey, would you be willing to negotiate and then potentially talk her down? Now, if she if she just takes your offer, she's not gonna get to the marketplace where it might price it like $300, $200 higher. So it, it's really good to lowball like this because then they um, you're not competing with as many people. So don't be scared to lowball. It feels really uncomfortable. This is what I do. It works super, super well. Um, and it's just like bidding on, I don't know, houses. Like if, if you bid on enough houses and lowball the hell out of it and they're, you know, we get lucky with one of them, then you get a really good deal. Um, same thing with flipping stuff. I'm trying to think what else, what else, what do you guys want me to look at? Is there anything specific you guys want me to look at trying to flip here? I'll, I'll try to flip something. Let's go to the free section. Let me know in the comments. What do you guys want me to flip? Like, is there anything you guys have been trying to flip and you're curious? I'm just going to go free stuff here. Free stuff, really important that it just was posted. Um, I guess when you go to free stuff, you can't do it by like when it was posted, I guess. Uh, just see. There's a lot of good free stuff on Marketplace, by the way. Like this dresser. I don't know. You probably sell this for like 20, 30 bucks. Not worth it. I don't know the piano market. Does anyone know the piano market? I'm, I think there's a really, you can get, okay. Deirdre says they're not good. So I don't know much about the piano market. I do know those things are a bitch to move. Um, that's why they give it away for free. Yeah. Um, this looks good. This probably is not free. Pricing varies. Yeah. I hate, I hate when people do that. The market is free, but it's not. Uh, let's see. Okay. So here's what you can do guys. I told you guys like avoid the free section of marketplace. If you're going to try to like be the middleman and like broker a deal, if you can use transportation, the free section of Craigslist is incredible to get deals like this. Like this is a nice sectional. Um, now with that being said, I think I do see a rip in it. And when you're flipping couches, you want to look for rips and tears. There's one. So I take that back. This is unsellable. There's so many rips. Um, but if there wasn't, that could be like an easy $150 flip. Um, let's see. So you have to be quick. Like you got to move. And what's cool about Facebook is they will like constantly show you this stuff. So you got to just spend the day on Facebook Marketplace looking up that one thing. Now, what's cool is if you can create a market, I'll call it, of like the one thing that you look for, then you can really start understanding like what to look for for couches. I love couches. I love couches. The reason I love couches is because it's a hassle to move them. So people will give them away for free. And then your real job is just moving them to someone else. And that's what you're getting paid for pretty much. Whereas other things that are easier to like to move that don't require like heavy lifting, um, you know, people will typically like sell them. Um, Uh, someone said a, they had a brand new screen door, still in plastic. No one would take it. Left it up for two days before I took it down. Um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you about that. Uh, maybe try running marketplace ads to it. I don't know how much you paid for it either. Um, what I'll what I'll tell you guys is like on Facebook Marketplace. You know, I'll bring this back up. This person had it up for two days and then took it down. 
um it was brand new and i don't know if you like listed it for free or not so you either overpriced it or if it was listed for free and no one wanted it it was could have been junk people don't want I mean, there's people that want junk, but there's a, like a lot of things like if, if they're worth like 20 bucks or something, like not worth it. You really have to like consider those things um, and consider like why something isn't selling. Again, look at eBay, look at other listings, figure out. It's important to know what the pricing for the market should be. If you want to sell stuff, you obviously want to try to sell it a little bit higher. Um, but, you know, it's not always the case. Uh, let's see. If we find some good free stuff. Now, this stuff, it takes time. Like, the 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 potential of me, like, finding something really good. Actually, this is not bad. That is nice. There's a, Unless the scratch is pure wood, bedroom set, in poor condition. Never mind. Yeah, there's a lot of scratches. When you have, like, a whole bedroom set, those are, like, hard to move. Um, and you can sell those if they're nice. Me and Deirdre got a really awesome one. Um, I wouldn't just look at the free section though. I don't know. Let's try dresser. Oh, you know what I'll say? Tables, tables, kitchen tables sell so quickly. If you can find a good kitchen table set, um, those things sell like this. Um, if you find a good one, um, let's see. Fortunately, I haven't gotten responses yet probably saw it and they're like this guy lowballed me too much uh table or like kitchen set let's get out of the free section let's just do like i turn that off let's just do like uh shit let's go to marketplace there we go so can we sell can we find an underpriced table? Now, again, lowballing strategy. We just start lowballing. <laughs> uh, here we go. It's kind of kind of cool. I don't know how quickly I could sell it, but um, I would message this person. Now, problem is, if I sell this for a hundred bucks, is it worth picking it up? They're kind of close to me, so maybe. Um, and I could get this in a if I had a truck. But the pro, but what the other thing to be cognizant of is like, will this fit in your car? And if not, like, is it worth like renting a U-Haul? Um, I don't think so. So I'd probably skip on that. I'd probably want to make like at least two hundred bucks if I have to like rent a truck or something. Um, let's keep looking here. All right, so to clarify, uh, someone had said, I said 60 bucks, but I said first come, first serve, a best offer. Okay, so you're overpriced at $60. So what I would have done instead of just taking it down, unless you're not willing to go to like 30 bucks, I would have probably listed it for 30 and then seen if people reached out. Also, consider running a couple dollars in, in Marketplace ads because uh, you'll get a lot more views. Um Oh, this is cool. I like this. This conference table. I like this. I like this because there's some office chairs and then there's an actual table. So I'll hit up Kathy. This has only been listening for 16 hours and I'll just... Ah, oh, shoot. I accidentally clicked off. Damn it. Um, Okay, well, I would have messaged her and what was it listed for? I don't even remember what I just said it was listed for. Uh, let's see, office. Damn it. I don't know why that just happened. Oh, it was conference, right? Conference. That was the keyword. No. The fuck? All right. Well, Facebook screwed me on that one. I don't feel like finding it. Oh, here it is. 300 bucks. That's way overpriced. Um, I could sell that for 300 though, so I guess it's not. <laughs> I could probably sell it for like two to 300 um, so what I'll do is I would just hit her up. Hey, Kathy, how's it going? This available. And I just offer her probably like a hundred. I don't, I don't know if I go any higher. And then she says, yeah. And again, it's important to say like, I will come today. People want to get rid of shit guys. Like, um, 
Ah Chu, like Ah Chu just want to get rid of the uh, screen door. Like now, what are you going to do with the screen door? Just going to sit there and collect dust. If someone hit up Ah Chu and was like, yo, I'll buy your screen door 20 bucks, probably be like, okay, now you got for 20. And then if you're, you know, have some form of way to sell it for 60, then great. You just made 40 bucks. So in this case, I don't know if a lot of people are going to reach out to her, but I would offer this check hundred bucks and be done with it. She says, no, I sent out 20 different messages. See, like, look at that. She's competing with this. This is like a different conference table though. It's way bigger. This would be super hard to move. Eight weeks ago, it was posted. So maybe you could buy this. Um, yeah, Achu said take 20 for it. So like, this is what I'm talking about. This is like a perfect example. Like, just wants to get rid of it. I'll take the 20 bucks. That's what, all these people are in the same situation. So now if someone had reached out when it was, at, let's say at 60, maybe it was priced, maybe it was priced wrong and it should have been priced at 30 and someone would have bought it. Now, if you reach out to Achu, actually, let me pull it back up. If you Now let's pretend, let's just play, play pretend here. Achu listed it for $600. Let's say it was a six hundred dollar item. It wasn't. It wasn't the the door. It was something else. It was six hundred bucks. No one reached out. Then he took it. Uh, he or she took it off. Then, if you reached out while it was still on and said, "I'll do two hundred, maybe Ah Chu is in a situation where Ah Chu has to move. A lot of these times, people are moving, and it's like a desperate situation or time sensitive, or the office is downsizing, whatever. And you're like, "I'll do two hundred. And he's like, fine, I'll do 200. You come, you pick it up. And then really it should have been listed at three or 400. You just made your hundred, $200. Um, this was listed an hour ago. Super overpriced, 500 bucks. Um, if you just look at like the other conference tables, it's a nice conference table though. Uh, kind of overpriced though. I like this one. If this had chairs, it's a little bit easier to move that. Um, Let's see. This is a nice one. I like this one. I don't love the chairs though. Chairs are ugly. Uh, I do like the table. That's a nice table. Um, 400 though. Eh, you're not going to sell that, my man. Uh, I don't know. What's something else? Oh, here we go. Look at this. Quantity 30 by 60 mobile table, 60 bucks. I have two $60 located business. Must make appointment to view and wear a mask. Thanks. These are nice tables. Um, I could definitely sell these. So I don't know if he's listing like 30 bucks each or 60 bucks each. Um, knowing like the, how much you can get for a table. Cause I just did it. As long as these are in decent shape, which I would want to find out before going there. I could definitely flip these things. And sell them for like 50 a pop. As long as they're in good shape and like whatnot. So what I would do is just be like, so if we think about it, that's a hundred bucks, but I got to transport these things. Um, so I could do that with like my dad's van or Deirdre's SUV. If I didn't have an SUV or a van, then makes doing this a little bit tougher because then you have to take that in consideration. Let's just assume we can make a hundred bucks on this flip. Then if I get it for like, if I talk them down to like 40, then we make 60 bucks profit. Um, but that's given my time and having to move this shit and then having to list it, sell it. Can I make more than 20 bucks an hour? Probably like, a, I'll probably make around 20 bucks an hour. Now if I had to rent a U-Haul and if I had to get help, then like absolutely not. So I personally would probably avoid that one, but you know, that could work. Could also be like a fun way to learn a little bit of this stuff, right? Um, Let's see what's going on Craigslist. You know, Craigslist isn't just good for the free section either. What you can do though is pop in here. Um, let's see. Someone say Tom says I got a meeting, but when you are gonna <laughs> when are you gonna start selling merch, couch hustle, couch flipper shares, let me know. <laughs> Tom, I appreciate it. We're, we we want to get a store up. A Shopify store. We got to get Bean Life shirts. We got to get Flip shirts, Couch Life. Um, I'll hit you up once we're doing it. Um, 
uh, Chase says I sold a really nice laundry machine, but what I find selling stuff is every time they come to meet me for the item to pick it up, they try negotiating. What's up with that? Um, so you have to be stern. Like people are always going to try and negotiate. That's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to negotiate. You got to set precedent. This is a gr- I'm glad you brought this up. Set precedent, Acho. Uh, like when someone reaches out, they're interested. I will tell people. I always, even if it's not true, I tell them like, hey, like we've had a bunch of people reach out, but if you want to come, if you can come today, like I can sell it to you, but like I have a lot of people reaching out. So like, let me know. So that sets precedent because now it shows that there's demand, which means like don't negotiate because there's demand. That means if they go and negotiate, they know that they're going to be they're just ducking behind me. You guys can't see. <laughs> she just like crawled through. That means if there's demand, like they know going into this, like, okay, maybe I shouldn't go if I'm going to try and negotiate because there's a lot of demand. And then I'm straight up like, like I know what I'll take and what I won't take and just be true to that. Like know what the lowest you would go and just base it off demand, by the way, anyway, um, like Deirdre and I sold, if you guys have been following the vlog, we sold a uh, sectional. Uh, made 150 bucks on it or something like that. Um, and there was only like a number I was willing to go to and a couple people reached out and they negotiated through there. But I don't deal with the people in person. If they like, don't be afraid to tell them to go fuck off. If like they come and they're like, oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to try. Like if you have a bunch of people reaching out, just be like, sorry, we've got like 20 people reaching out that are more than happy to pay this. And, you know, um, Yeah. So like, again, like just stay your ground. If you have enough, if you have people that'll pay the price for it, don't worry about that shit. Be like, no. And you don't have to be mean, but just be like, Hey, I'm sorry, but like, um, not willing to negotiate on this. Like we have a bunch of interest and, uh, see what they say. So last thing I'll say is about Craigslist free section or sorry, not free section. You can find good stuff on Craigslist. It doesn't have to be on the free section. I was kind of confusing how that all came out. Craigslist is not just for the free section. You can find good deals on it. So you could find a MacBook on there. So like, let's say a MacBook Pro. Actually, their search tool is much better. Like it's much more precise and it's in order of, like I can put this in order of like the newest. <sighs> much better than Facebook in that regard. Um, I don't like this. This is weird. It's like stay away from weird stuff. This looks like, either a scam or a company that's like selling it. If someone's already reselling something guys that they're trying to flip, then there's not much margin left for it. Uh, so this is a good example right here. Someone took a picture of the battery cycle on it. That means they know what they're doing. Most people don't know to take a picture of the battery cycle. That indicates that like they are probably flipping. Um, here's a 2018. Uh, very good condition with the original box, cash only, no trade, no haggling. I hate when people say that because like, that's weird. Like why, if you're saying no trade, trade or haggling, that means you're selling a lot of stuff. So it could be someone flipping. Um, this is also very odd. See, this is why it's important to understand like what you're doing. Like this just says MacBook pro. There's no year on it. That's not normal. That's not normal. That's weird. Unless it's because that's how high Sierra does it, which I highly doubt. This does not make sense. Like if I go to my MacBook Pro, I don't know if any of this is bad to like show you guys. Um, this is a this is a 2018 that I'm on right now. 15 inch 2018. It says it right here. You guys can see right here. That's what we're doing for the live stream. Why does it not say it there? That's a red flag. That's why it's important to like understand this stuff. Uh, so that's probably a scam. And avoid that guy. Um, yeah, not too much good stuff here in Philly. But uh, that's pretty much everything, guys. We're like at time right now. If you guys have other questions, I can stay on a little bit longer to answer them. Um, let's see. Okay, Achu says, sometimes I feel like people offer me more money to shut out the competition. Then when they get me alone, they renegotiate and try and lowball me. And it's also, they can shut out others. Yeah. So just don't deal with it. Um, like when they get there, the answer is no, like this doesn't, I don't know. This doesn't really happen to me 
And there's a reason for it. And I think it's just, it's maybe a little hard for me to explain, but like, I don't, I like set precedent really well, I think. And then every few times someone does try to negotiate, it's an, it's usually a no. I'm trying to think, you know, it it has, I remember with the bike, it, it happened a couple times and I remember just shutting the person down most of the time. One person did get me down a little bit. Um, so you have to be comfortable with saying no and like being smart about like negotiating. Cause like people will do that. So I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I need to relist two things directly because of it. Okay. You know what? This is the last thing I'll say. So for all you that actually stayed till the end here, this is a good piece of advice. Don't ever do this where you take the listing down. So a big problem, Achu, is that you're taking the listing down and then screwing up the situation don't ever list the listing as pending and don't ever take the listing down the reason for that is a lot of times people will flake that happens and if they flake you want to have all the other people lined up if they go to try and negotiate you want to have all those other people lined up be like no motherfucker look at all these people they're going to pay for this the price that i listed it for um do you want it or not so don't that could be really screwing you up is you're taking the listing down and marking it sold because like they also know that by the way if you mark the listing as sold i know that you did that and then i know that you're not getting people reaching out to you anymore so like that maybe that's why it's happening to you more frequently than it's happening to me is because you're doing that um and then like you wrote people walked and it was a huge hassle um Oh, you already wrote it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so just keep it open. That's a big That's a big uh, reason, I think. Um, cool stuff, guys. I think I, I actually just came up with this idea to do this on the fly, literally five minutes before the live stream. So I think maybe if like we have a day where like, it's like, okay, let's flip some shit. Um, maybe we'll do like an actual live stream where I flip some stuff and actually try to make like 50 bucks on a live stream. So I'll have like an hour. So I think I can maybe find something. And maybe Deirdre will join me because she's good at flipping. Do you want to flip stuff with me on the live stream, Deirdre? I mean, I don't want to make you feel bad when I'm better. <laughs> she says she doesn't want to make you feel bad when she's better. Um, she did get some really good deals, though. I so love a good deal. Deirdre loves a good deal. <laughs> so maybe what we'll do is maybe on a future live stream, we will do it live and actually try to make some money. Um, and we'll have an hour. Maybe, maybe we'll go an hour and a half. We'll do an hour and a half. Um, and we'll do that. We'll go like an hour and a half and we'll try to f- try to make like 50 bucks or something. Um, it is the only problem I have with that for everyone's watching is like, this is like a, a drawn out game. You don't just like spend an hour and a half. Yeah. Usually, you have to like wait for it. yeah, usually it's like throughout the day, you're going back and forth. You're checking it throughout the day. That's how this works guys. This is like a, that's like a, how this game works. You check Facebook marketplace and Craigslist on your phone throughout the day. And then a good deal pops up. You hop on it. So maybe that's not the best idea, but it'd also be kind of fun. So we'll think about it. Um, cool. I hope this was a fun mix up for uh, the live stream. I hope you guys enjoyed this or the, the the live. If you guys have additional questions about flipping or whatnot, feel free to reach out. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. I will see you all hopefully next week's live stream. Have a good one. Go crush this week. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.